Welcome back, guys. Thank you for joining me Five Minute Friday. Today, we are tackling side angle pose or extended side angle. So make sure you got a block or something you can rest your hand on, but you know, that's what blocks are for. So if you have one, that'll be great. Uh, and meet me on the mat and let's get this done. Okay, so we've started so often uh, in Tadasana. For this one, I actually find it's slightly easier to start from your down dog. It sets you up a little bit better. So get onto your mat, hands down, make sure it's nice, and sit up, feet back into their position. Find whatever your expression of your down dog is. We're not here for long. Inhale, I'm gonna start with my left leg so I can play to the cameras a little bit better. Left leg's gonna come up with control, just step it through between the hands. Now, make sure you get 90 degree in that foot. If that means you drop the back heel down and you have to handball your own foot there, that's fine, but this leg is important. Oh yeah, and I forgot to start the timer. From here, I can look down at this leg, I can check that this 90 degree is in place. Now I come up on the toes of the back foot, and I can drop that back heel down so the leg is at a 45. The nice option about being in this position with this leg step through is I can almost look down the heel to see that I have a heel to arch alignment. If I draw a line straight from my heel, it dissects my back foot. I can even move this back into a much better place. This is gonna help open up those hips. From here, now I can slowly start to bend this knee so the left knee tracks over the left pinky toe. Right blade edge is pressing down. I focus in on this foot pulling the mat forward and that leg pushing the mat back away. So this right leg is engaged. This left leg, even though it's bent, is also engaged. From here, I bring myself up, hands onto hips, almost like you're starting a warrior. Left arm, palm up, which relaxes the shoulder. Down here, we start to get into this horrible rotation. Palm up, nice and light. You can use this weight to push this left thigh out. I like to rotate this right arm around to remind me to open the chest, which is gonna be a big part of this. But before we get to the arms, be aware that the bum is almost gonna to wanna to stick out because your body wants to do what's easy. Tuck the tailbone under, engage the glutes, core is engaged as navel comes towards spine, bum tucks under, making this all a lot more active. Ooh, feel the glutes turning on right now. From here, the chest is my barometer of this is right. If my chest is facing down, I need to extend and exhale to come a little bit further. From here, we can also use that arm to help rotate us around. As we get better at this, we can also now feel that connection between the heel of that right foot, the blade edge, is extending. As I'm pushing through there, I'm extending out through this right hand, but shoulder comes away from ear. So we wanna reach the long right side body. If this is something that you're like, okay, yeah, I'm ready, I wanna go further, then you can start to play with dropping this left hand down, but not at the compromise of the shoulders. So as I come down, you can see shoulders are facing down. The next step here is a lovely block. Now I can press into that block and to that thigh, bracing it so the knee doesn't collapse in and keeping that chest nice and open. Both shoulders come down the back, opening the hips beautifully here. Eventually, we can lose the block or come to the next setting and come all the way down. Again, as I come here, you probably see in this camera, my shoulders are starting to now face the ground. We don't want that. Open yourself up. So come as high as you need to to keep that opening. When you want to come out, hands come onto your hips, you can come up almost through your warrior two like, extend that leg. That's going to feel amazing. And step forward into your tadasana and give that legs a little shake out. Make sure you do both sides. Now, side angle, very much like trikonasana, I can't express enough. It's that shoulder orientation to the ground that's important. Anytime the shoulders are facing the ground, we need to come out of that pose slightly. The depth of both of those poses is not about how close we can get to the ground. We really wanna make sure it's a chest opener and a hip opener as we lean back. As soon as we get here, we're starting to lose it and we're compromising the wrong thing, okay? As you come down, if it feels good, then by all means, but make sure we can look up and underneath that shoulder to see that we're in the right place, which is the last thing I didn't mention. The gaze, if we come back up into this position, we look underneath this right shoulder or up to that right hand. That keeps the gaze open, keeps that side body nice and long, keep that going all the time, 
And the rhythm here is we inhale, I reach, I almost come out, exhale, now I start to open up that chest. Inhale, out, lengthen, exhale, twist. Inhale, out, lengthen, twist. And that is the rhythm. Extend that left leg, come to the toes, you can spring forward and get out however you want. Make sure you do the other side, otherwise you get very imbalanced, like us teachers that always demo on one side. So there you have it, extended side angle, all done with moments to spare. If you want to see any other poses, make sure you comment below and I'll break those down for you. Otherwise, click subscribe, notification, and like, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.